Hi. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first November show. I am really, really honored to host this show and the ladies that are with us from Boyle County. Um, I'm also excited to be with our KYGO Digital Live team and our panel, uh, expert panelists. We have Whitney York. She is actually um, on site at the Murray State STLP competition, and they're in the big arena there at Murray State. So we'll get to hear from her in just a second. She is a technology integration specialist at Murray Independence. We have Heather Wariel. She is the executive administrator of digital innovation and a, consult a consultant for KDE Library and Media Specialist. We have Brooke Whitlow, who will be joining us maybe in and out. She is Nelson County's community and school media coordinator. On the panel, we have Crystal Doolin, the technology integration specialist from Corbin Independence. And we have uh, myself, I forgot to introduce myself. I'm the CIO in Floyd County. And like I said, I'm super excited to introduce the next two ladies, Susan and Stephanie Wade. Susan Taylor is the Chief Information Officer in Boyle County. And Stephanie Wade is the Technology Integration Specialist. And they are like the super dream team there that makes a lot of things happen. Um, you won't see the a lot of times the stuff that goes on uh, is from our network admin and Matthew Whitlock is behind the scenes and he is going to be um, behind the scenes, but he is also making some magic happen there in Boyle County. Um, so before we begin, Whitney, do you want to jump in for just a second and tell us about what's going on in Murray right now? Yeah, so great to see you all. I'm going to be in here for just a short minute and then I'm going to hop out because the kids are starting to share their presentations. So I'm going to go run over and see all the kids. But I have with me Jennifer Earls and Patty DePriest from the MSU Kate office. So if you do not know about the Kate office, I just want to give them a huge shout out. They help put on this event. It is amazing. They help with our KY Go Digital event in the summer and they are great resources to follow on Twitter, Facebook. They're always sharing stuff. Um, I always email them when I have questions, so definitely make sure you follow them. But yeah, you need to see where we are. Let's turn. We're in the big Murray State Racers Stadium for our STLP event. There's kids everywhere. There's robots running around, running into you. It is awesome. So I just wanted to jump in and shout out because this is such a cool event. And we got so big at Murray State, we had to move to the, the basketball arena. So just wanted to say hey to everybody and uh, have a great show. I'm so excited. I'll watch later. I love you too. I have seen you present. You probably don't know who I am multiple <laughs> times. <laughs> and I have stolen lots of things from you. You have great models, one-to-one -one and SAMR. So really, really excited to see what you ladies have to share today. So thank you all. Thanks, Whitney. And that's what it's all about. And, and that's exciting. I'm glad she was hop, able to hop in. So girls, a lot of you, um, you obviously have a lot of fans. And so if you are watching the show and you have any questions, Crystal is on the live chat. If you can go to kygodigital.com and um, you're where you're watching it, if you can't type in the chat, if you just subscribe, you'll be able to um, join in that chat. So make sure you hit that and uh, you can chat with Crystal for any questions. Um, Without any further ado, I say we get into the show and see what Stephanie and Susan have to share. Are you ready, ladies? We are. Oh, yeah. Well, um, I'm Stephanie Wade. And I'm Susan Taylor. And we have lots of things we'll share with you today. We are by far perfect. We're still a work in progress. Um, and some of the things we're going to share today aren't necessarily things that uh, we completely discovered on our own. We, we like to curate mm -hmm. and reach out and find resources and utilize those here. Um, but I'm going to share my screen with you and we'll get started on um, the, the slides that we have prepped for you. And if you have questions as we're going along, um, let us know and we'll be glad to stop and um, answer anything you have. But like I said, I'm Stephanie Wade and Susan Taylor, and we, our motto is go big or go home. <laughs> uh, and it's been, um, uh, it's a fun journey. Um, we both kind of rule by that. Um, we try to, we don't just do anything halfway, <laughs> which can uh, be interesting sometimes, but I loved the quote. If it scares you, um, it may be a good thing to try. Um, because through this process, I think there's been some things that probably have scared us and we may have even scared our teachers and principals just a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm going to let Susan start um, with talking about our timeline and our really how how we've gone about the one to one mm -hmm. process here. 
So as Stephanie said, that, that picture you saw before was actually um, when we got our notification that our PO for our Chromebooks was submitted on a Monday, and then we got notification that the semi was coming on a Friday. So those were actual authentic reactions <laughs> to that news, exciting and scary at the same time. Um, so as Stephanie said, the, this in looking back at this and in preparing for this, which I can't take credit for, Stephanie's kind of put the timeline together in this whole presentation, which is awesome. Um, but in looking back, what we think has been a really long road has been a really quick ride so far. Um, but we're always, as Stephanie said, learning as we go. But we had a couple of key things that happened, I think, very early on that helped us. Um, probably one of the biggest things was putting devices in the hands of the teachers. Um, I don't know if we just got lucky or if we were just that smart. I'm going to say it was a combination of both. But we really mm -hmm. felt like that the teachers had to have a certain comfort with the devices in order to be able to teach with them. Um, you know, I say we've got digital uh, natives, but we don't always have digital learners. So we knew we had to get our teachers prepped for that. So we started in actually 2014, um, 2013, the pilot with the middle school and the high school teachers actually having devices and we even stole their desktops from them which scared them but we felt like that was you know we're gonna give you a nice shiny new device but we've got to take something away and, and that worked out really really well so then in 2014 we've got our Chromebooks for our middle school and our high school students in grades 6 through 12 and in that was a lot of reviewing of policies and procedures talking to principals getting feedback from them and really honing in on this idea of gone are the days that we could can blame technology for behavioral issues um, and we can't use that as a negative or take that device away because of some behavior problem it really has to be seen as an integral part of teaching and learning um, so we really had great principals who were on board with that and they helped us form those policies with when issues came up whether it's a broken device or something inappropriate done on that um, device um, so that was that was huge for us. And, and I can't speak enough to the support we had from not only our principals, but our superintendent. There was a huge buy in across the board. Um, and then in 2016, we 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 started to go down into the elementary grades with the fourth and fifth, which they've done fabulous with. In fact, we are down to district wide third grade. Um, currently and in second grade in some classes, and they are doing phenomenally well with that. So um, that was huge. And then some things in looking back, I don't think we really knew these non-negotiables. I think Stephanie would agree with that early on. But in looking back, we realized some some key pieces were, again, the policy and procedures that we have hyperlinked on here was huge. We had to have a learning management system in place. Um, mostly for consistency and that so all of our teachers were on the same page page um, and our students it, it really has that kind of overall feeling of comfort knowing where to go and then Hapar I always tell the story when we got our devices we I uh, was a firm believer that teachers were in charge of the classroom and they should be able to manage the devices themselves and I quickly ate those words and we got um, Hapar in which allowed teachers to monitor what's going on in the classroom and on the Chromebooks and they can even go in and um, focus browse students if they wanted to and then Stephanie was huge in the destiny fall it piece of it and that's just the management of it so these devices didn't weren't just sitting somewhere they were actually tracked and they became um, a, a, a resource that was actually checked out to this the student which became huge in that it gave a certain sense of okay this is my responsibility this is my device all right well um, the next parts um, that we have are really more about um, the PD and and um, you know once we had the devices we we kept saying mm -hmm. that like getting the devices and Susan always says writing the check, check would be the easy part and um, I think that that we found that really that was true I mean that was the grunt work of kind of what Susan mentioned getting the device getting them tagged getting them entered in destiny all those types of things uh, Susan worked heavily with our principals on the funding model and how we were going to get those devices. And I think Susan alluded to how um, pro one-to-one -one our superintendent um, has been. And so that's been really, I mean, huge. Yeah. Like yeah. we wouldn't be able to do all the things that we have done if that weren't the case. Mm -hmm. But once we had the devices, then um, it's been really, uh, I guess, more uh, intensive, uh, training pieces. Um, and so that's what we're going to share next. But before we move to that part, does, is there any questions or anything? 
Yes, there actually is. Marty Park chimed in here. <laughs> um, he says, uh, what is your relationship with your school library leaders oh. and how have you continued to build that relationship uh, with the new learning models? That it, it, Stephanie could speak to this. She's got the library background, but from where I sit and what I see, the library media specialist has just has changed dramatically for us in this district. And we're starting to see where we have certain needs just in the, if you just want to strip it down to the management of those devices. Um, we've got to have a place that's designated in those schools and it's just naturally the library media specialist is that place, not only for the management of the devices, but helping the teachers. They can become a TIS for that school, for lack of a better term, but they are huge. And then something that we battle with, <laughs> battle's not a good word with, but we we continually try to hone that process of what is the role of the library media specialist and how can they best support mm -hmm. um, the devices in the school. And especially um, at the elementary now, we're really starting to focus in, not that we weren't before, but now that we've got devices in the elementary schools, uh, principals are starting to see that library media specialists, which we have fabulous in our district, mm -hmm. um, are starting to see that you know, their role has dramatically changed, not just because somebody else is telling them, but they're they're down there in the weeds and they're they're living it and breathing it on a daily basis. Stephanie, you want to add to that? Well, and actually they're in part of our steps. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm going to, if it's okay, I'll go ahead and share my screen again and walk through some of our next steps. Is that, does that sound good to everybody? Okay. All right. Um, so moving, um, on in the presentation that we have for you guys. Um, the next uh, part was beyond the device. And I think that's kind of what we were alluding to. So we got the devices, we have them, we put them in the student's hands. And this is what I think we would, Susan and I both agree was probably the next crucial step. And that was investing in professional development. And I think sometimes, um, you know, you gotta be careful and not be too stingy with those P that PD time. Um, because teachers are just like students in uh, working their way through the summer, learning how to use that technology substitutionary maybe as the first step and then learning how to augment and um, so forth. So these are just a few of the techniques we've used and they're not ours alone. I know a lot of people um, have used these and like the first one is Appy Hour and I actually started doing these when I was the library media specialist at the high school and I saw them at some type of library or technology conference and I thought oh that's a great idea and so once I took this role that's just something I kind of continued doing um, you know if you feed them they'll come right that's my role um, so that's always um, been a nice way to kind of sprinkle um, some uh, tools for your teachers and then we would do specific trainings on tech tools, tips, tricks, how to use the Chrome browser, that type of thing. Um, we did a whole lot and Susan and I would partner. We would actually, you know, divide and conquer um, the different schools in the district. But the Google ecosystem um, and investing in Drive and moving all the data to Drive, um, that was a big thing for us. Um, when Susan mentioned that uh, the desktops were pulled from teachers, teachers got their MacBooks. And about that same time, um, we did away with, I say we, I wasn't in this office at the time, but the Z drive, which was like the network drive. Um, and Susan and the staff at the time pushed all of our teachers to store in the cloud. So that was a big thing. Um, and then exploring the Google ecosystem last year in November, uh, we, I believe it was November, December, for December, the Gmail. we yeah. went Gmail. So um, that kind of like fully submersed us into the Google, uh, Google verse. So um, we also, I do PLCs a lot with, um, or team meetings, common plannings, whatever you want to call them. I work that out with our principals. Our principals are really great about asking me to come and sit down with their staff and those have kind of evolved. They started out as like just general information. And then now um, recently, when I go to the PLCs, uh, the teachers bring some learning targets with them. And we look at that target and kind of drilling it through this MR process and how can we change uh, the instruction, but still address that target utilizing technology. Um, we did some stuff with Chrome extensions. We did Google certified um, and I actually have a link to some information for anybody who would want to use that um, boot camps. 
that was fun. We actually got that idea from Jessamine County and Erin Wagner. Um, she's in our region and she had shared how they were doing it. So that's not really something unique to us, but it has worked well for us. I've got a link here to teach your breakout. Um, and I'll just show you that real quick. Um, it may give you all some ideas. And actually, these are ideas that we like either saw at Kisti or we saw elsewhere. So it's not you know, we didn't necessarily reinvent the wheel, but this has um, tons of sessions that we did um, and teachers got to choose. And if you're interested or if anybody on here is interested, we can send you a copy of the form we used for teachers to sign up. And then from there, we built a schedule. We'll be glad to share mm -hmm. any of that with you. Um, but that was fun. Um, that was something our teachers really enjoyed. Um, and then we've also tried to really harness social media. I love sharing resources on Twitter. It's probably um, one of my favorite platforms professionally to use. Um, so that was the first step is just providing professional development. We're still doing that. I want to um, just chime in for just a second. Yeah. All of the resources, if you're watching, will be um, underneath the show when we get finished and this populates on YouTube. You'll be able to access all the resources that Stephanie and Susan are talking about. But if you get on Twitter and you get on their hashtag, and the reason that I want to mention this is because I follow you all, but I also will constantly search for your Rebel Tech Tips. Okay. <laughs> it is so... Um, it, you know, I mean, it just helps when it's right there at your fingertips, someone in the state that we're all on the same page. We all have the same goal and and we're all in it together. So uh -huh. you, you may not know it. And um, like Crystal and um, Whitney were talking about, you may not know it, but a lot of us are um, are stalking your hashtag, too. So. Oh, woohoo! Yay! Awesome. So funny. Yeah, uh, I, I wanted well, to chime in real quick as well. You might see that there's a big TV behind me. That's because Dr. Belcher, the CIO here in Jefferson County, uh, has plugged in, plugged, hooked up to the TV so he can watch as well because we are hoping to learn a lot from you guys as we get more and more devices in our school. So um, we're really excited to uh, benefit. So those Rebel Tech tech tips, let's make sure we get them on the Kentucky Go Digital hashtag too. All right, ladies? Oh, yes, I need to start doing that. I've been trying every now and then, but yeah, yeah, I'll do, I'll do better job at that. I'll include them. Um, and Crystal, Crystal also has a question from the chat, right, Crystal? Yes, I do. First of all, shout out to Stella. Stella Pollard. <laughs> she's watching. She, she's commenting on here. Um, Marty says, uh, can you share how you've built a trusted relationship with your principals? Because he commented that you just said that you were partners with school leaders to collaboratively design you know, the PD. Yeah. So what's us well, talk about that. Let me, uh, relationship. It's so important. Uh, yeah. Okay. Can you see it? Okay. Yeah. You can see us now. Sorry. Well, I was, I was laughing. We're running like 45 tabs. Yeah. So sorry. We've got different. So one way to build relationships is you're married to one. Um, she's yeah. married to the high school. <laughs> really cool. So um, now in, in all seriousness, <laughs> we, we wear, we, everybody here, you know, we were talking before that we wear many different hats, but I think in that sense, it's, it's good. There's never a time when I don't feel like I can't reach out to any of the principals and either run an idea, but they're not looking to me for all the answers, just as I'm not looking to them. It's truly a team, which is going to sound cheesy, but it, it, it makes a huge difference in being able to have those conversations and, and just brainstorm ideas. Well, I was thinking this, what about this? And you were thinking this, what about this? So, in, in just having those opportunities to be, we talk about being at the table. We truly are at the table with the curriculum leaders, with the administrative staff. So it's it's really, those lines are, are kind of blurred. There's not these silos anymore. We're just, mm -hmm. everybody's so in tune with, with what the other person's doing, because again, it's not separate. Well, and um, another thing I think probably, uh, I wish Damon Jackie was on here. I'm not yeah. sure if he is because he would think this is hilarious, but we're very real. And so uh, <laughs> <laughs> maybe too real sometimes, really. But um, anyway, I think that helps us like there's not uh, like we're not a threat. You know, we're definitely a team. Um, we're out for the good of our students. Um, we mm -hmm. all play for the same team. And so we've tried to be um, really intentional about that. And then also, um, I think they really see us as a resource. Like we're not there to make your job more difficult. We're there to make it easier and to help you. Um, and so that's, I think, yeah. been huge for us. Um, and then we have uh, we have several other steps that I'll share with you. Um, 
and give me a second to share my screen again. I'm also working off a different device today. Um, that is the beautiful thing about Google is it doesn't matter what device. It doesn't matter if you walked off and forgot your backpack with your MacBook in it. Or your to-do list. Or my to-do list, which yeah. I'm obsessed about. Um, sorry. <laughs> All right. So our next step was beyond the device, taking the next step um, and uh, building capacity in our mm -hmm. schools. And I think Susan already alluded to this with our library media specialist, but I, I was a former media specialist at the high school. And so even before I took this position, I felt like I worked with Susan a whole lot because my whole world was becoming um, revolved around technology and we had gotten a Mac lab there and, you know, several different things. So we were already used to that to an extent. And then when I took this role, I felt like that was the natural fit for the school connection, the in-school connection. Amen. Um, Hallelujah. Yes. Same, same <laughs> story. Library media specialist. I love it. That's all. Yes. Well, and honestly, and, and I told our library media specialist this um, on Monday when we had a staff development day. And I mean this honestly and sincerely, if it were not for them in mm -hmm. our buildings, the one to one initiative. No. Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't be possible no. like we they circulate all the devices. They help us get them configured. They uh, troubleshoot problems. I mean, like they're in school heroes for sure. Absolutely. Um, can, I, and Stephanie, can I just say um, one of the things, and I totally agree. And one of the things that we've done in JCPS is we've put our library media specialists at the tip of the spear to lead our backpack initiative. Uh -huh. And that was very intentional because as a former LMS, I believe in, in that role and the power of that role to uh, lead big change and innovation. So I, I'm totally with you and I'm excited to see our library media specialists lead and shine here as well. Yeah, yeah, it's been great. And the way that, um, because we have a mixed environment, we have some schools with technology or with a library media specialist and some schools without, and you can definitely see a difference of the, of the culture. I mean, both are good, but when you utilize and you see that the position of a librarian has changed, it's evolved over time, just as a teacher has. You, right. know, you can't say, oh, well, we don't need that because books, you know, technology as a leader, if you're watching, you have to understand that you are growing that position to keep up with the future, just as to, as a teacher, as it has to evolve. Yeah. So it goes to you all to really maximize that position uh, as support and not just, um, you know, think it's, you know, it's right now the most needed position in a school yeah. to yeah. make sure things can run efficiently. So good job, yeah. Will. Yeah, we really, thank you. Um, we, again, like I said, our one-to-one -one would not not be possible if we did not have um, the library media specialist uh, doing that for us in the schools. Um, I've got a quick question, sorry. Yes. The, the student, the tech help desk, do you all run that as a course mm -hmm. for those yeah. students? Uh -huh. Yeah, and actually um, that's out of our high school library. Um, what used to be, um, <laughs> It's kind of funny. Uh, used to be like an AV room where we stored like carts and TVs and overhead projectors and, you know, all that fun old technology stuff. And then also it was like periodicals were stored there. Anyway, we we transitioned that room into a tech help desk. And that's where we've got loaner carts of Chromebooks. And um, this particular actually the picture right here is of a student who's helping break down the Chromebooks. But our media specialist and the assistant there help us oversee that. And then Matt, our um, one of our network admins, his his office is there as well. And so he really like kind of takes those kids. We call them his groupies. Um, they he, are. Yeah, they're, they're his groupies. They uh, he kind of takes them under his wing for us and shows them how to break down Chromebooks and do several things with that. Um, he's actually going to get a group of students together and help us build Project Lead the Way machines. And so that's been really helpful to mm -hmm. us as well, um, is having that help, tech help desk um, where the students can serve. And honestly, it's been life changing for some kids. I mean, they have gotten some really great skills. They've kind of come out of their shell. They've met some like techie friends and Matt, even though it's kind of scary, we think that they look up to him. I'm just totally kidding. You just have to know Matt to appreciate that. But uh, he's been kind of able to harness some leadership skills in them. So it's just been awesome. I would yeah. highly, highly recommend. Mm -hmm. well, I can think of so many students who. Absolutely. They're yeah. the ones that are getting in trouble in class with the technology. 
because yes. they're being stifled. Yeah, um, something like this uh, can make such a difference for them. Yeah, and a lot of people want to say, "Oh, well, this would be a natural fit for STLP," and it, it is by all means. But these yeah. aren't necessarily our STLP kids that are taking advantage. Uh huh. Yeah. And one of the things I wanted to chime in too. One of the things uh, that we're doing here with our backpack initiative is we have every school is going to have a student backpack team to yes. create that student tech leadership along with the library media specialists and the school level team, the student team. And we're starting to see on Twitter more and more of our student teams emerge. And Dr. Smith, who is our assistant superintendent of teaching and learning, she said the kids lead the way. I mean, they yes. lead the way on this front. So let them lead. So I think it's awesome as well. Yeah. I say one thing. Um, the more I have learned about STLP, and you mentioned that even the kids that are not in STLP, or then that means they need to be an STLP. Uh -huh. Yeah. All, all of yeah. those categories. I'm channeling some Jeff Sabolski right now. All of the yeah. categories <laughs> they're opening, get them involved because when they go to Rep Arena, uh -huh. I mean, it's just, it's awesome. So well, and that's how one of, uh, we had an engineer yeah. one year and that's really how he yeah, started. Right. He was working there and he was a super duper smart kid and just wasn't, um, wouldn't typically have done that, but we kind of, um, pushed him a little. We kind of pushed him. <laughs> and oh, so it's worked out great for him. And he still does it with the University of Kentucky. He was there last year. So. Yeah, at, yeah. 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 He was. Yeah. Um, but then the last, um, uh, point on there is the Google uh, certified teacher positions. That's been great um, and helpful. We had those for a couple of years just to kind of build momentum. Um, and then now we just do the boot camps to encourage teachers. Mm -hmm. um, taking the next step, number three is admins leading by example. Uh, we, which is, <laughs> It, it's been probably this year, I would think more than any other time, we've really seen the, the admins really start to embrace and seeing their role in, in leading by example mm -hmm. um, and how that has an impact on their teachers. So we've seen, you know, a couple of our schools have done the Google Classroom for um, their PLCs and even just, just generating information in general. Team Drive. Um, my superintendent laughs because I told him this year we're not going to have any more paper agendas. Everything is stored. Um, so he's in um, on the, the Team Drive, which he's embraced a little bit begrudgingly, but we pulled him along and he's he's good with it now. Um, and just the whole idea of hyperlinking the doc documents in there because we all know we have that folder that we go back to. We're trying to find what was said at this meeting and now it's on this one nice organized place. So just having them realize the importance of this in their job and how can it can make it beneficial has had a huge impact. And, and again, this year, I think more than any other time we've seen an explosion. I think that directly relates to um, having the Google um, environment and then going Gmail last year was huge in that. Mm -hmm. um, and then Stephanie is just the master of Google Forms with the walkthroughs and we're constantly honing and um, making that better and just just efficiency is really what it comes down to I think and mm -hmm. and having them see the benefit again translates not only into benefit for them but for their staff and ultimately the students which is why we do this mm -hmm. well and I'm just a firm believer in leading by example um, and that servant leadership and I'm not going to ask you to do something that I, I'm not going to do so I think that's been really um, helpful and I think Susan may have mentioned it but I've kind of pushed teachers to do um the google classrooms or use calendar because that's how their principals were sending um, invites to them um the next part is moving beyond the device step number four Can I walk in you agree where with me this is probably question. sorry yeah I've got another yeah. question um allison langley's watching hey allison she would like to hear more about the TRTs and instructional coach positions that you have in your district. Um, is there one per school? Are they full time, part time? What does that look like? <laughs> Hold on just one second. Let, let us unshare for this. Yeah. We need to yeah. see your faces. I'm just yeah. kidding. We, um, we, we don't. don't. <laughs> we have one. I was really, really lucky to, you know, I started this job in 2006. And I think from that point on, I was asking for TRT. And then in 2013, is that how long? 14, 14, 14. Um, I got Stephanie. Um, and and my superintendent reminds me of that quite often, even though I say I'd like to have more. Um, so budgets are always, you know, a huge uh, piece of the puzzle. But 
Absolutely. They saw the investment in Stephanie has played huge dividends um, in structural side of it. She's just taken us to a whole different level. Um, so I think we really use our library media specialist. As that. And that's what that slide, yeah. I think you saw that the TRT and mm -hmm. instructional coach um, that was with the library yeah. media specialist so role. We don't have any paid STC positions. We don't have any paid TRTs aside from Stephanie. Um, so maybe that's a benefit to know our background. And I have two network admins in our district and our district's about 2,700 students, 300 or so employees. Um, so we're, I feel blessed to have a TRT and not all districts have that, um, but we don't have a TRT for every building. Yeah. And that's what, um, on that slide, um, that's what we're really asking our library media specialists. We're really pushing administrators to have a flexible schedule. Mm -hmm. um, no classes scheduled for the media specialist um, and then be able to be um, the TRT, be able to do, uh, you know, run the library, the, the learning hub, digital commons, whatever you want to call it. And then also help do some instructional coaching because we have a lot of, teachers who, um, you know, they know what their target is and they know uh, we have common exit slips and we have common assessments, all that. But it's like the content of that lesson, what would be some good delivery methods? How can we um, change up that traditional sit and get um, that kind of thing? If that does that make sense? They do that organize it so they have a thought partner, too. You know, I mean, they yeah. them, I mean, it's like co-teaching thought planner, thought partner. I love yes. that model. Yeah. Well, and um, one thing that we're seeing, and I know like we're not in uh, a unique situation, um, the teacher education programs, like the number of students that they have has dropped. The number of applicants we get for jobs, you know, it has dropped uh, the need for um, help and teaching teachers how to teach um, is growing. So in our um our library media specialists are very skilled, not just at being a librarian or even the technology. They're great teachers as well. Mm -hmm. So they're helping equip those um, teachers who, you know, otherwise may have struggled or, or need resources or just, I mean, we've all been there in that first year or two, you know, and think, how did, whew, how do we make it through that? I'm just kidding. But, you know, those first couple of years are tough. You don't know what you don't know. So that's been big for us. Think about the culture of the building because happy teachers, happy kids. So um, I, I can see the support for those, especially now with KTIP gone and yes. the support for those first year teachers. Uh -huh. um, is that Brooke Whitlow? Did she make an appearance? Woo! <laughs> I, listen, I was told not to miss this episode and I've missed it. So I can't wait to go back and watch the replay. I heard so much about you ladies and your one to one roll out so anyway hello i'm gonna my mic. I'm not sure where we are in the uh can't wait to learn from you awesome. awesome thank you well if you all don't care i'm gonna go ahead and try to finish up our slides um we have another uh meeting in just a few minutes so um let me um uh, move on and then if you all have other questions uh let us know uh all right so uh let me catch up with where i was sorry i got myself a little distracted um oh on this slide right here we do have there is a google uh, walkthrough form linked there and we have included the samer model on it that was the new thing that we did this year just as we're trying to move teachers um we included it on the walkthrough form so they'll create some good discussion it's not a gotcha nothing like that mm -hmm. it's just meant to be more professional growth um so now speaking of samer um we the ways we've tried to move up um, and we're, we're still in that process is to um, we did a uh, just a generic awareness type of training with teachers on SAMR. You know, a lot of teachers <clears throat> uh, SAMR didn't really exist when they went through their TEP program. Um, I love um, this uh, Kathy Schrock's guide um, to SAMR model and how it connects with blooms. That's we are very. Um, rigorous instructionally driven i don't know if another way to say it uh, in our district so this has been helpful for teachers because they can see that when we redefine we're asking kids to evaluate and create and do those higher order thinking skills we included samer on the walkthrough we um, have teachers involved in something called steps it's like a problem solving 
group cadre of teachers. Um, and this year, our STEPS teachers are focusing on tech integration in SAMR. And I've actually been going out to schools and meeting with them and helping problem solve. We do a lot of PBLs and inquiry lessons, presentations of learning. And those um, are heavily focused uh, on tech skills and presentation skills, 21st century learning skills. And so as we coach teachers on that, we try to um, get them to move more to modifying and redefining. And then this year we're doing flipped instruction mm -hmm. on our non-traditional days. And I'll let Susan talk about that just for a minute. So, and I, I, I used to say one of the biggest pieces that helped move us was non-traditional, and I, I think that's still true um, because we were asking to now teach outside the brick-and-mortar school walls. Um, so that was huge as well in back in 2014 timeframe. But this year with our NTI, you know, we're always trying to make it better, and we always struggle with access and who, who can and can't receive um, the content. But one of the things that we've seen with several of our, of our teachers that's worked really, really well, in particular in our math classes, is actually putting the teacher in front of the student through um, screencasting. So we've asked for our middle and our high school teachers to take their lessons, which they've already created, and they actually do a screencast of themselves. Now, you know, early on, we had to get past the being shy around the cameras, and we told them they don't have to be in front of the camera, uh, just quite literally being the teacher so the student has access at home at any given time. Um, so that's that's huge. Our teachers just did a professional development day last week on this. So they're working on that content and getting ready for the NTI season. So we think that that's going to pay dividends as well, because we are also not saying, you know, do this for NTI days, but do it now. Um, because just Stephanie and I can attest, we both had children that had a fabulous math teacher that would do these screencasts. So if, if there was a problem a math problem that the students didn't know how to do, they could act quickly access that as a resource, which as mm -hmm. a parent, I greatly appreciated. And as a student, they knew where those resources were and they could access them at any time. So that, that's been, I'm looking forward to seeing how that plays out for us. Yeah. And that's been fun to see. Um, I've been seeing some examples that teachers have sent to me and it's really great. Um, I think particularly for math content, because mm -hmm. we all know how uh, much that's changed. Um, since we were in school and if you have little ones, then the process is a little different. So it's nice to have that teacher there teaching or reteaching. Um, it's great for intervention. I mean, I could go on and on. Also, i uh, got a little Flipgrid icon on here because we do have some teachers that are uh, doing a lot of interactivity with Flipgrid and it's free. Woo -woo. We love free stuff. Um, <laughs> this year we... Um, well, actually, last year, I take that back. Last year, um, Susan and I collaborated with our special ed director and we worked together on getting Read Write for Google because that was one barrier is um, not having enough accommodative tech tools. So that's been another really great step for us. And then wrapping it all up, we are still taking the next step. And step number five is still moving up SAMR. And this is mm -hmm. quite literally the hardest part. Mm -hmm. um, we do have teachers doing video lessons and they're using those for like reteaching and flipping classrooms, differentiation. Um, like we do a lot of station teaching. So in that independent station or uh, in the intervention station, um, I may make videos for some of the underpinnings that some of my kids are struggling with. Um, we have some teachers that are kind of dabbling now. Um, they've actually been dabbling for a year or two and we're kind of growing this group. They're doing, um, adaptive assessments with Google Forms. So like if the student misses a question, then it'll push them to a video um, reteach and then they'll answer a couple more questions on that standard. Um, so that's been a really awesome experience. Um, it's really unbelievable. I'd be glad to share some with you if anybody would like to see those. Uh, we're pushing teachers to do Google Expeditions and like Google Maps has just become unbelievable tool this year. So we um, this summer for uh, PD, Susan and I worked with some social studies teachers on using Google Maps, um, English teachers taking lit trips with Google Maps, that kind of thing. Um, and then our another thing we're trying to figure out <laughs> is pacing and how to build classes where students can kind of move at their own pace and like master targets at their pace uh, and then move on to enrichment activities. And that has been a beast. Um, 
we have a lot of teachers who are like great guinea pigs and they will go along <laughs> with us on anything. Um, but that's just really where those are all these number five things are still things we're trying to figure out and work on. And they're kind of works in progress. Um, we don't really think that we're masters of those yet. Um, and really beyond that, we're not sure what num step number six is going to be. Um, and, and we're okay with that. Uh, we, uh, try not to be afraid of what's next and just be ready to be innovative. Mm -hmm. We do have a couple of um, innovative classroom grants right now that we put out to teachers and we completely redesigned their classroom. Um, and actually we, Courtney uh, took us on a virtual tour mm -hmm. of one of her high schools and um, we went to Corbin's new middle school because we're also building a new middle school right now. Um, but just to look at innovative furnishings, um, you know, we have one-to-one -one technology. We are doing station teaching. We're doing a lot of differentiated learning, but our classroom furniture was still very traditional in that, like, it was like the little tablet desk with a hooked arm chair, you know? So we're in the process of trying to change the look of the facility mm -hmm. to meet our instructional model. And that's expensive, but it's been <laughs> super fun. Um, I just want to give a shout out to one of our principals here at Chansey Elementary, Rhonda Cosby. Uh, she the, the whole school went all in with flexible seating. And oh, awesome. It, awesome. it is. And it's interesting. She had her teacher. She said, um, bring bring a chair. We're going to watch a movie. And it was that movie. Every student succeeds. What's that movie called? You all know what I'm talking about. And everybody brought a really cozy chair to the gym and they watched this movie over the summer. And she said, now, imagine you had to sit here for two hours in a hard plastic chair. Mm -hmm. and watch this movie and that was the breakthrough that her teachers had and they went to flea markets and yard sales and I mean if you get a chance to visit I have an awesome flex flexible seating elementary awesome. school here in JCPS you should check yeah. out it's unlike anything I want to be an elementary principal just so I can have a school like that <laughs> <laughs> I understand. I, I am quite jealous because Susan and I, Susan's really done the infrastructure of the technology and I've done the furniture and the, the fun stuff. The, the fun stuff. Yeah. Um, but I'm jealous because like, I'm not developing any of this for myself. You know, it's like going to be at the new middle school and our, I'm like, dang, I need to office over there for sure. <laughs> so anyway, otherwise, do you all have questions for us? Um, like I said, I'll end with, we don't have it all figured out. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> we're still learning. Um, I love that you have this plan. You show how you are thinking ahead still. It's not like you have arrived and um, and I, I lucky, luckily for us, we got a snapshot of this presentation beforehand. And I looked at your, um, the, the same are, uh, PowerPoint and the presentation that I guess you delivered to your staff. So now everyone has that if you want yeah. it and, yeah. um, and in it to show that to teachers and all the examples. So if you're thinking about doing this, it's, it's done for you. Thanks to these ladies. So please take advantage of that presentation because you can go straight in front of teachers and they will love seeing what we're talking about and what you may, you know, put on a walkthrough and have the examples already done for the principal because sometimes this is coaching up the principal too you know yeah. well and, and we was, uh, i should have uh, alluded to we train the principals before we train the teachers like like at a a, a district staff meeting mm -hmm. i went through this training with them and said i'd like to schedule to come uh, to one of your team meetings and talk about this with your teachers so mm -hmm. um and anytime i mean they're great about like basically they're you know you tell me what what we need to do. So um, I appreciate that they trust us and they do. Um, it has generated a lot of really good conversation. Mm -hmm. Well, I saw this. Well, what do you think about this? Where does this fall on Sam or does it, you know, so it's just that conversation constantly that I think is, I really enjoy out of the walkthroughs in particular talking to the principals afterwards. Mm -hmm. I love your timeline. Like you, you might not notice, but you've kind of like rolled out a timeline through those slides today. Mm -hmm. And it reminds me of the Ketz master plan timeline. I don't know if you've ever seen yeah. what David Couch has rolled out. And uh, Kurt, Dr. Belcher and I were just talking today about the timeline that we're starting here on our, with our team. Mm -hmm. And it takes time, right? I mean, you started with the picture of you guys like, oh my gosh, Chromebooks are coming. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and now you're kind of at this point where we still have a long way to go, you know, and, still and, like this. Yeah. yeah. We're, yeah, we're still, we're still, we still feel that way we most still days. Feel that way. Yeah. yeah. 
but I know uh, the superintendent of Nelson County brought a team out to visit and yes. his feedback uh, about that visit was he, he was really impressed with how strong your team is in regards to how you work together. And you said it earlier, like we're all in this together. And he said that was very evident to him in the on his yeah. visit, like all hands yeah. on deck. So shout out. I think you guys are fantastic. Anything else? I don't think so. I just want to re kind of just make sure that we drill home. Um, we have a really innovative superintendent who's always like definitely advocating for us to try. You know, if I went in and said, we're going to turn all the tables upside down and, you know, sit on the legs of the tables, he'd be like, oh, that sounds awesome. You rock it. <laughs> so that's um helpful and then we have really great teachers um, and so they're willing to change they trust us they they're brave you know it would be real easy to stick with what you've always done um, so really we can't we've kind of just facilitated we can't really take credit for everything we've just mm -hmm. been the facilitators Well, I am so glad that you shared everything you did because this has been, a, like you said, a work in progress. And to be a new administrator or even a teacher and talk about being brave, um, this is this show is going to be one that will be shown to um, a lot of people for them to be able to get ideas and have that support to know um, that someone out there has done this and that you all will be um, resources for them. Um, are there any other questions on the chat or on the panel before we before we head out. Well, thanks for having us. Yes, thank you for having us. Uh, like I said, I've, I've been fans of, your, of, of um, you all for the, from the beginning, from the very beginning. Yeah. yeah. Um, Brooke and Heather, do you want to close us out and talk about how um, we can still all stay connected with KY Go Digital? Absolutely. So, um, as always, don't forget that if you subscribe to KentuckyGoDigital.com, KYGoDigital.com, then you will stay up to date with the latest episodes that are coming out. And my favorite part about actually subscribing to the channel is when you get the emails that say that the channel is live. So be sure to subscribe and connect with us um, over there on YouTube. So our next show is going to be on November 27th. And we um, are going to have a very special celebrity guest <laughs> on our show. Um, you may know her as JCPS's very own Mimi Ratliff. She is going to be talking about her creative use of digital tools to connect parents um, and really going to be talking about community engagement in districts. And I'm super, super excited about this episode. So be sure to subscribe and mark your calendars for November 27th. And Brooke, can we just give them a little preview about our December episode that all the moms and dads out there are going to be so excited about? Can you just give them a little preview about what's coming? Um, yes. So our December episode is going to focus on what your kid really wants for the holidays. And so we're going to be talking all about STEM tools and super exciting stuff. So that's all you get for now, though. All right, Heather, you want to talk about um, any other ways to connect? Uh, so we're going to be starting to plan Kentucky Go Digital Regionals in January and roll out the full summer tour schedule uh, early spring. So other than the hashtag and, of course, Facebook and the channel, um, we'll see you at regionals next summer. All right. Try to connect and create and share with us. If not, we will see you on November 27th. Bye, guys. involved with Kentucky Go Digital. Attend regional events, like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, or follow us on Twitter. <laughs>